Okay, continuing my look at the uh, OSG um, Kevin Zucker designed Napoleonic titles. Uh, this is Napoleonic Bay, which may have actually been the first Zucker design. It was either that or Napoleon's Last Battles, um, which he did with SPI back in like the mid 70s, mid to late 70s. Um, this is the reprint. I believe, uh, 1997 reprint. Um, I think this was originally published in 1980 um, through Avalon Hill. Um, there's been several different versions of it over the years. Um, I know that the Avalon Hill version had kind of this light blue box with this sort of cheesy looking cover on it. Um, this has a little more classical period painting um, of Napoleon in his... Uh, older, fatter period. Um, that's what it says on the back. Yeah, it's got here 1997 um, operational studies group. So, um, so Roger McGowan actually did the counter design, which I did not know. Um, so this was the 97 reprint of Napoleon at Bay, which was the, the um, operational period of basically the invasion of France um, at right before Napoleon has to abdicate and uh, goes to Elba. So this would be, you know, prior to when he comes back um, for Waterloo. So inside we've got some dice, counter sheet, and um, kind of like the old school Avalon Hill Victory Games SPI type counter sheets. It's got that fold over, um, and these are the thick brown core um, counters and you can see they're not all side mounted but there are a lot of connecting side nibs which are annoying but manageable um, you can trim those off with a rotary cutter and uh, without making any damage to the counters themselves um, so we've got here you can see different these maybe are army counters or just force counters. Um, I haven't actually played this level because I think this is a slightly different level than uh, his uh, Library of Napoleonic Battles series or a slightly different scale. Um, so I'm curious to see how it works. I know Callendale did a video of uh, the Avalon Hill version so so I can watch that to get some sense. And it uh, looks like they do have... Okay, here's your individual units. So these are on the back. So it's done this way for fog of war purposes, I'm sure, um, where you actually have the unit identifications. Um, focusing very well, there we go. Where you actually have the unit identifications on the backs of the counters. Um, again for fog of war and then various markers and so forth so you know the design on the counters is um, simple functional and not too busy nothing particularly crazy so you always can expect good solid work from Roger McGowan here are the series rules. This says the campaigns of Napoleon, so I'm not sure if there are other games at this scale level. It's not part of the library of Napoleonic battles, which is more of a grand tactical scale. Um, but the rules format and layout looks similar um, to the library of Napoleonic battles rules, which themselves look very similar in layout to a typical set of GMT rules. Um, and there are example play. Thing. So 24 pages of rules. Uh, so not too not too onerous. But then there are exclusive rules. And this is specifically then for this campaign in France, 1814, and these 
would have, I assume, your setup and, you know, kind of like function like a scenario book. Oh, here's the campaigns of Napoleon series. So it's got the other titles listed. So, yeah, Bonaparte in Italy, Struggle of Nations. I guess I didn't realize Struggle of Nations. I thought that was more of a strategic level. 1809. That was Victory Games. Yeah, actually, the Victory Games one I am familiar with. It's one of the, the few titles missing from my Victory Games uh, collection of war games. Uh, Emperor Returns, Clash of Arms, Eagles Tourneys, Clash of Arms. Yep. So none of these other ones are actually printed under the OSG title. They're all through, published through other publishers. But yeah, there's the scenario rules, campaign rules. Now there's charts and tables. One of those cases where I'll have to pop the staples out and uh, back uh, to get the, the charts out. Victory Games used to do that all the time. I've, it's kind of annoying, you know, when you pay the money, <clears throat> and this wasn't particularly expensive, but when you pay the money uh, that most Wargamers pay for games, you tend to want, you know, give us a, some card stock or something instead of having us punch pages out of our, or, you know, uh, remove pages out of our uh, books for paper, uh, Charts and tables, kind of annoying. <clears throat> There's the maps, we'll get to those in a minute. Um, in addition to the maps, and for some reason my camera is not focusing very well today. Um, so there's like a collection here with the pink cover sheet, but it was like kind of like a pad um, that has these worksheets. So you got this campaigns of Napoleon, this battle worksheet, double-sided. And then you've got the army of, you've got a bunch of organizational displays. So here you've got army of Silesia, more army of Silesia, army of Bohemia. These are all your invading allied armies. Allied major general organization display. If I remember right, like the one in the, the Avalon Hill version, had like pictures of this. the uh, general's French organization display, French major general, French cavalry major generals. There's a lot of displays here. Uh, Army of Silesia leader manifest. And you'd think, you know, they could have, since they did this for all these displays, they could have just thrown the charts and tables in here too, but apparently not. Army of Silesia leader manifest to get different scenarios and who's in what. Bohemia Leisure Leader Manifest. This shows where these people start and um, the various scenarios. Same thing here, French Leader Manifest. French Independent Reinforcements. And Russians. So, like, 20 pages of and uh, assorted leader manifest, Prussian unit manifest. Austrian, Wurttemberg, and Bavarian unit manifests. Goes on and on, French army. I'm sort of flipping through these quickly because I want to get the maps before I run out of time. Put this video on my phone. And then that's the end of it. So these were all clustered together kind of on a notepad, so you just tear them out. Um, once you're ready to use them, and uh, get the maps out here. Because there's two maps that connect. properly but there you go not the prettiest 
of maps, certainly compared to the uh, Library of Napoleonic Battles. Um, that's kind of a murky sort of mess you can see here. If I can zoom in to some detail. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with like the clear terrain. There's this weird sort of mottled kind of paint job to it. I think it's supposed to try and represent culti you know, cultivated fields, but there's no definition to it. So it looks like you're looking through it through, you know, thick opaque glass or something. So very strange, you know, large map, functional, but you know, up close, it's not so bad, but from a distance, not very pretty. <laughs> um, you know, you've got some various tracks and stuff along the side. So it'll be it'll be interesting to play. I'll see. I'd be curious to see how this works functionally because it does not look. You know, roads and stuff are not eminently visible at a glance. So, anyway, there we have a look at Napoleon at Bay.